I need you to get in this barrel because I don't want you to see where I live, okay? Mm. Okay? In January 2002, 12-year-old Ashley Pond disappeared en route to her bus stop in Oregon City, Oregon. Two months later, Ashley's classmate, 13-year-old Miranda Gaddis, also vanished under mysterious circumstances. The disappearances received international media attention and were profiled on various television programs as well as serving as partial inspiration for the film Megan is Missing. The remains of both girls were discovered in August 2002 during an ongoing investigation. And this is their story. Investigators found the bodies of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis in Ward Weaver's backyard. Miranda in a cardboard box in his shed. Ashley in a steel drum under a concrete slab he'd worked on with his son. Megan is Missing is a 2011 found footage horror film written and directed by Michael Goy. The film revolves around the days leading up to the disappearance of Megan Stewart, a popular high school student in North Hollywood who decided to meet up with the boy she was interacting with online and the subsequent investigation launched by her best friend Amy. The film was eventually banned in New Zealand and has been heavily criticized for its depiction of sexual violence and brutal imagery. The director requested that the parents of the young cast be on set during filming so that they were fully aware of their involvement on the project. The film experienced a resurgence in popularity back in 2020 on TikTok after many users called the ending of the movie different variations of the word traumatizing. After researching more into the story, I came to find that the movie is loosely based and inspired by the real-life murders of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis both of whom were on the same dance team, classmates, and friends in real life prior to their disappearances. To better understand the circumstances behind their murders, we must first learn about a man named Ward Weaver III. K2 News again asks if he has any idea where Ashley and Miranda are. None. I'd like to know where both of them are. I'd like to see Miranda come home. Um, Ashley, I'd like to know where she's at, but honestly, I'd leave her there. Weaver casually strolls across his concrete slab. I had no idea we were walking over one of their graves. So when you walked me over the concrete slab in July when we did our interview, mm -hmm. you had no idea that Ashley Pond's remains were buried underneath it? None. Should I believe you? You know what? I honestly don't care. So you have no idea how Ashley's body got under the concrete slab that you poured? Do you know how deep she... My understanding is you know how deep she was? We went all the way down to the water lines. Court documents say Weaver hired his 15-year-old son, Alex, to help him dig a large hole in the backyard behind the home. The police, I mean, their assertion is that you asked Alex not to help you work on the concrete slab within a few days after Miranda disappeared so that you had an opportunity to work on it yourself and to pour the concrete and theoretically to put Ashley Pond's remains underneath it. Okay. No, I did not confess to my son I did anything. I didn't kill Ashley. I didn't kill Miranda. So if you didn't kill Ashley and Miranda, then how did they wind up in your backyard? Or? Public property. Who knows? Ward Francis Weaver III was born on April 6, 1963 in Humboldt County, California to Trish and Ward Weaver Jr. In 1967, his father abandoned the family and his mother then married an abusive alcoholic before they relocated to Portland, Oregon. In 1981, a teenage relative reported that an 18-year-old ward had physically and sexually assaulted her. Police investigated allegations of abuse in 1981, but the Multnomah County prosecutors decided not to pursue charges because Ward had enlisted in the armed services. Shortly thereafter, Ward graduated from Marshall High School and joined the U.S. Navy Reserve. He was discharged the following year on May 17, 1982 for heavy drinking and neglecting his military duties. During his time in the Navy, Ward's father murdered a young couple whose car had broken down into Hatchapi, California, and he buried them both in his backyard. His father was sentenced to death for the crime in 1984, and that same year, Ward Weaver married a woman named Maria Stout and relocated to Bakersfield, California. On June 15, 1986, Ward attacked the teenage daughters of a friend in Fairfield, California, striking one of the girls with a block of concrete. 
He was sentenced to three years in prison for the assault, and after his release, Maria gave birth to their child, Mallory, who would go on to befriend Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis in the distant future. Unfortunately, Ward's habitual angry outbursts and assaults would only continue to escalate. In 1993, Maria Weaver filed a restraining order against Ward, and their marriage ended in divorce. Fast forward to August of 1997, Weaver began having an affair with a woman he met at work. The couple eventually moved into a rented home in Oregon City, and it was there that Ward's daughter, Mallory, became friends with Ashley and Miranda. They were two girls who shared so much in common. They went to the same middle school, they were on the same dance team, and both girls lived with their mothers in this Oregon City apartment complex, right down the road from Ward Francis Weaver III. The person who connected Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddish to Ward Weaver was his 13-year-old daughter. She went to school with the girls, was on the dance team with them, and often invited Ashley and Miranda over to her home, where she lived with her father. Ashley Pond was born on March 1, 1989, making her 12 years old, and Miranda Gaddis was born November 18, 1988, making her 13 years old at the time. Now try to remember that Mallory, the friend in the situation, now spends time between her mom, Maria's house, and her dad, Ward's house. This will come into play later when Ward is accused of inappropriate activity during one of Mallory's sleepovers and tries to use his daughter's whereabouts as an alibi. Mallory Weaver, Miranda Gaddis, and Ashley Pond were all students at Gardner Middle School and would occasionally hang out at the Weaver home after school. Ashley and Miranda had known each other since second grade, both resided in the same apartment complex, and lived down the street from Mallory and Ward. In August 2001, four months before she disappeared, Ashley Pond accused Ward Weaver of attempting to sexually assault her at his house. The incident was reported to police, however, charges were never formally filed by law enforcement. An oversight that would develop into a horrific nightmare because in just four months, Ashley would disappear and never be heard from again. On the morning of January 9th, 2002, Ashley Pond left her home at the Newell Creek Village Apartments to walk to the nearby bus stop for school, but she never made it to the location. Lori Pond, Ashley's mother, and her sister both remember seeing Ashley in the morning prior to her departure for school. Lori Pond remembers hearing Ashley say goodbye to her the morning of January 9th. Ashley's younger sister, Brianna, remembers trying to get her sister out of bed. No one has ever reported seeing Ashley arrive at the bus stop that morning, but she did have a habit of waking up late and missing the bus. Occasionally, when she didn't take the bus, Ashley would receive rides from Ward Weaver, whose work location was on the way to Gardner Middle School, and his house also sat a mere 50 yards away from Ashley's bus stop. On January 18, 2002, police make their first attempt at communicating with Ward about Ashley's disappearance. At this point, no official suspects have been announced in Ashley's case. Police searched his home, and even though they discover a large flip-top freezer in the middle of his kitchen and that he was late to work on the morning of Ashley's disappearance, they don't have enough evidence to arrest or incriminate Ward. But now that Ward Weaver is on the police's radar, they uncover even more disturbing information from his past. Ward has a history of domestic violence against both adults and minors, and news had broken out that Ashley Pond resided with Mallory and Ward during the summer of 2001. Weaver tells me um, Ashley Pond was, lived at his home the previous no, summer. No, he happened? says her mother didn't want Ashley anymore and wanted him to keep her. He is also aware that Ashley and Miranda had both been sexually abused by other men. It was then that the 12-year-old accused Ward of the aforementioned sexual assault. And even though Ashley vocalized the attempted attack, the authorities didn't take enough precaution towards her situation to keep Ashley out of harm's way. Now police set up a roadblock to question residents about Ashley's disappearance, and it is here that we are introduced to Miranda Gaddis, who was involved in a youth search party assisting in Ashley's case. It's really hard to believe that having a one of your friends or something, it's just really different and really sad. The next time we hear the name Miranda Gaddis, it's because she too has vanished. This is one of the only videos ever recorded of the 13-year-old before her life is tragically cut short just two months later. She mentions Ashley would discuss running away quite often and mentioned it to her just a few short weeks prior to her going missing. Their dance team also organized a fundraiser to help assist in the search for Ashley, which they scheduled to take place on March 23, 2002. Unfortunately, tragedy would strike its fateful head once again and send the small town community into a spiral. On the morning of March 8, 2002, Miranda Gaddis disappeared under eerily similar circumstances to Ashley Pond. Michelle Duffy, Miranda's mother, calls 911 after discovering her daughter has been abducted. After getting ready for school, Miranda Gaddis never makes it to the bus stop in front of Ward Weaver's house. What, what's your home address where she's missing from? Uh, 14155 South Beaver Creek Road, number two. The same as Ashley Pond. And what's your daughter's name? Miranda Gaddis, G-A-D-D-I-S. And no one's talked to her or seen her. 
After Miranda's disappearance, the FBI instated a task force to search for the girls and stated during an interview, there's slight hope that they have run away, but there is growing belief that there was some kind of criminal activity involved. Authorities returned to Ward Weaver's home to further question him about Miranda's disappearance, but are unable to receive any helpful information. Around this time, one of Ward Weaver's ex-wives goes on record to help authorities further build a case against him. According to her, two weeks before Miranda disappeared, Miranda attended a birthday party for Mallory, who also invited various girls from school and from her dance team. During the party, Miranda warned one of the girls attending to avoid spending the night at Mallory's house because her dad had a history of attempting to molest and sexually assault minors who slept over. Apparently, Ward overheard Miranda's cautionary tale to the unsuspecting girls and became visibly upset. Miranda was just over there with a bunch of friends from the dance team. Weaver's first wife would later tell police Weaver got upset at that party because Miranda had advised another teenage girl not to spend the night, telling her Ward Weaver had molested Ashley and she might get molested too. The morning of Miranda's disappearance, authorities questioned Ward, who claims he had been taking care of his sick daughter Mallory the night before and morning of Miranda's disappearance. This was later proven to be false when Mallory's mother clarifies that her daughter was at her home, not Ward's, the night before and the morning of Miranda disappearing. Miranda often went into Weaver's home in the mornings to wait with his daughter for the school bus. But the night before she vanished, sources close to the investigation say Weaver's daughter spent the night at her mother's house. The next day, when police come knocking, Weaver tells them he'd been home in the morning taking care of his sick daughter, when in fact, she hadn't been home at all. On March 11, 2002, Lori Pond, Ashley's mother, is questioned in an interview being filmed in front of Ward Weaver's home. A chilling new piece of construction is now set up at Ward's house with a visible blue tarp covering up a slab of freshly poured concrete on his property. It turns out that a week before Miranda vanished, Ward hired his son for assistance in digging a hole in his yard to eventually cover up with the concrete. Ward told his son it was a pad for a hot tub he was planning on installing, and next to the slab of concrete were multiple large barrels that Ward goes on to cover with dirt. Construction was still actively taking place in the days leading up to Miranda's disappearance on March 8, 2002. And the next day on March 9th, Ward allegedly calls his son to tell him he won't be needing any more assistance on the project. The rest of the work would be completed by himself, and when questioned about these private conversations, Ward claims the dates mentioned are completely off and he began building the hot tub at a much earlier date prior to Miranda's disappearance. From April to June 2002, neighbors were questioned, asked to take polygraph tests, and were profiled for any changes in lifestyle or unusual activity. Now, during that summer, almost five months after Miranda disappeared, Ward sold his 1977 Camaro that he typically drove around frequently. An unusual detail noted by the car buyer was that all the carpet and trunk lining inside the vehicle had been ripped out prior to its sale. On July 3, 2002, a television news reporter named Anna Song conducted one of the first interviews ever with Ward Weaver prior to his incrimination during which he admits that he failed the polygraph test conducted against him and is now resistant to providing any more information to authorities. And claims investigators are calling him their main suspect. That is what the FBI and the Oregon City Police are going around telling my family and my friends when they're questioning them about me. He admits failing the polygraph test in May, but blames that on the incompetence of investigators. He discusses the short time Ashley lived with him during the summer of 2001 and her accusations against him. Ward goes on to mention Ashley had a history of fabricating stories against adults in retaliation to her being punished. Ashley has this habit, if she gets in trouble by someone, she'll make accusations against that person. Um, and the first time that I actually I had to come down on her about her mouth. Um, she did just that. You know, she made accusations that I had molested her. He makes no mention of Miranda Gaddis bringing up his predatory behavior at his daughter's birthday party. Instead, he makes casual conversation and describes the typical slumber party activities that would take place in his home while the news team conducts a tour of his house. Depending on how many girls were here, <laughs> like I said, I've had some you know, huge parties. He this says there were times he ended up sleeping room. on the couch um, because his daughter's friends yeah. took up so much space. You could not walk anywhere in my front room without stepping on a body. During one of the clips, Ward walks by a flip-top deep freezer, which would later be suggested in court documentation to have contained the body of Ashley Pond. When assessing the remainder of the room, there is a magazine with a front-page story of both girls' disappearance, and one of the most chilling moments in this interview is when Ward and the reporter unknowingly stand on top of the slab of concrete where Ashley Pond's body would later be discovered. After this interview, Ward goes on a press tour in a desperate attempt to clear his name and announces that he is planning on moving to Mexico to get away from the accusations. 
The authorities continue to pay close attention to the case when on August 8th, 2002, Ward goes on a live broadcast to discuss his plans to move out of the neighborhood. August 8th, Ward Weaver says he is fed up with investigators hassling him and now plans to move out of state, perhaps to Mexico. I'm going to go check you know, a couple places out and see what's got the best chances for jobs and I'm out of here. Later that night, Ward allegedly calls his stepson Francis and makes a startling confession after the most recent news segment airs. Francis Weaver claims Ward confessed to him in a private phone call that he killed Ashley Pond because, quote, she deserved it and gave no further explanation for Miranda's death. Francis decides to withhold this information from the authorities and from his girlfriend, who at the time resided in the home with Francis and Ward. This would go on to be an almost fatal mistake, because on August 13, 2002, Ward's son Francis called police claiming that Ward had attempted to sexually assault his 19-year-old girlfriend. The young lady fled the home and was taken to a local business covered in a plastic tarp after breaking free from her attacker. Ward Weaver was arrested the same day for the attempted sexual assault, and law enforcement subsequently requests a search warrant to investigate his property. On August 14, 2002, Francis speaks with authorities and confesses that his father may have been involved in the murders of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis. The next day, a news crew trespasses onto the property to interview a neighbor who is retrieving his personal items from Ward's backyard. During this segment, a shed is filmed in the backyard of the interview. This will later serve as the site of discovery for Miranda Gaddis's body. That evening, attention turns towards the slab of concrete poured on Weaver's property. Ashley Pond's stepmother erects a sign next to the concrete slab for investigators to find, which reads, Dig Me Up. Did you notice a smell when you walked up the pathway? I did. Okay, that's all I have to say about it. And this is what I'm doing about it. Over the next couple of days, Ward's landlord nails up an eviction notice and puts up no trespassing signs all along the property to deter uninvited guests. He wanders around the property until he makes a startling discovery in the backyard shed. Inside, strips of fly traps are covered with swarming flies along with a foul odor billowing out of the enclosure. I'm here and I walked in to just kind of look around when I turned, these fly strips were right, right here. Oh, oh, you know, anyway. Hanging down? Yeah, they were hanging down, totally covered with flies. It would take almost another week before the FBI were granted legal access to the property. The FBI began a thorough search of Weaver's property on August 23, 2002, after obtaining the search warrant they were waiting on. The very next morning, on August 24th, FBI agents discovered Miranda Gaddis's remains inside of an empty box in the storage shed behind Weaver's home. Late in the afternoon, investigators processing the crime scene um, have discovered what appears to be human remains in the uh, back outbuilding uh, behind the house. It wouldn't be until the following day that Ashley's body is found. On August 25, 2002, the remains of Ashley Pond were unearthed from beneath the concrete slab in Weaver's backyard, where they had been stored in a 55-gallon barrel container, similar to how Amy's body is disposed of after her attack in the film. Late this afternoon, crime scene investigators processing the crime scene behind the house have recovered a second set of human remains. These remains were in the ground in a barrel underneath the area where the concrete slab was. At about 4.15 this afternoon, the Oregon State Medical Examiner has positively identified the remains discovered yesterday as the body of Miranda Gaddis. In his post-imprisonment interview, Ward still maintains his innocence and provides fabricated details of his whereabouts on the morning of both Ashley and Miranda's disappearances. So if you do the math, there's all right, 820 when Mallory caught the bus, 20 minutes from my shower, 5 to get dressed, that's 45, 12 to get to work, 50, what's that, 57 minutes? on an hour, doesn't leave a hell of a lot of time to kidnap someone, you know, them and murder them and do the body and get to work on time. But court documents tell a different story. Detectives claim when they interviewed Weaver a week or so after Ashley disappeared, he told them he'd encountered problems with his burglar alarm and that he'd been at home late that morning, arriving at work at approximately 9.30 a.m. I asked Weaver about the fingerprint police found with Miranda's remains his fingerprint. They found Miranda in a box wrapped in plastic, wrapped in another box, inside another box, wrapped in plastic, and the only fingerprints of mine they found were on the tape on the outside of all that. But a sworn affidavit from Oregon City Detective Greg Fryant says Weaver's fingerprint was found on the clear tape securing the remains of Miranda Gaddis inside the box. In September 2004, Weaver pleaded guilty to two charges and no contest to the rest. 
A plea bargain allowed him to avoid the death penalty altogether, and Ward Weaver is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole for the murders of 12-year-old Ashley Pond and 13-year-old Miranda Gaddis.